It's always possible U.S. forces could be deployed to a trouble spot in the world and become involved in a conflict. If the situation escalates into a war, it's only logical an enemy would attempt to disrupt U.S. Air Force operations. In the late 1960s, Air Force civil engineers realized they and their predecessors had little experience in repairing crater-damaged airfield pavements. With that in mind, the Air Force started incorporating new material, equipment, and methods for quickly repairing runways. These techniques and concepts became our current rapid runway repair, or triple R, methodology. However, before runway repairs can get underway, damage assessment must be performed. Specialized teams are formed and equipped for this purpose. These damage assessment teams must also be well trained so they can safely and effectively bypass mounds of pavement rubble and scattered unexploded ordnance to get a clear, accurate picture of airfield damages. The following video will discuss damage assessment team composition, supporting equipment, and unique procedures associated with airfield pavement damage assessment operations. Damage assessment teams, commonly referred to as DATs, play a pivotal role in base recovery operations. Operating for hardened vehicles, DATs assess runway damage as the first step toward restoring an operational runway to use after an enemy attack. Using Air Force Pamphlet 10-219, Volume 4, Rapid Runway Repair Operations, as a guide, DATs determine, record, and report the quantities and locations of airfield pavement damage, and they record and report the types and numbers of unexploded ordnance, or UXO, to the Survival Recovery Center. DATs must become thoroughly familiar with the recording and reporting procedure outlined in Air Force Pamphlet 10-219, Volume 4, to ensure the damage assessment process is effective and reasonably precise. Civil engineer technicians located in the Survival Recovery Center, commonly known as the SRC, use DATS information to select the minimum airfield operating surface which must be cleared and repaired to restore the operational capability of the airfield. The minimum airfield operating surface consists of a minimum operating strip, commonly referred to as a MOS, and supporting taxiways or access routes. Since major recovery tasks cannot be started until damage assessment and MOS selection are completed, speed and accuracy during damage assessment are essential. Three to four members make up a damage assessment team. The team is composed of one civil engineering technician, two explosive ordnance disposal personnel, or EOD, and one augmentee. As you know, an airbase runway is long and wide, so the extent of damage will dictate how many teams will be required to accomplish the job in the least amount of time. The norm seems to be three, but your base may decide to field a different number. The civil engineering technician has the overall responsibility for damage assessment. This technician will determine the location and size of craters, camouflets, spall, and bomblet fields and other airfield pavement damage. Field test results have indicated that with practice damage assessment teams can judge short distances of less than 100 feet, crater diameters, and spall counts to the required accuracy without tape measurements. The EOD technician accurately identifies and classifies any unexploded ordnance, performs limited render safe procedures on selected ordnance, and oversees any activity in a hazardous UXO environment. Furthermore, the EOD technician is responsible for defining the safe travel routes through hazardous areas and ensuring UXO reporting is properly accomplished back to the SRC. In a wartime situation, EOD personnel will be equipped to perform some NBC reconnaissance. While performing damage assessment, they may also check for contaminants in the area. After the runway is cleared through EOD, the NBC reconnaissance team may then go out onto the airfield and conduct any chemical and biological tests they deem necessary. Augmentees assist in recording information and communicating data back to the SRC. They can also serve as runners if radio communication fails. While augmentees can come from any shop, it's strongly recommended that these individuals be trained in damage assessment with other team members. They are, in effect, backup personnel for the EOD and civil engineering technicians on the team. 
They must be capable of performing rudimentary damage assessment tasks if called upon. The ranking member on the DAT is typically the team chief. However, regardless of rank, an EOD technician is responsible for the team's movement in the hazardous UXO environment. When an attack is possible, minimum alert preparations must get underway. These pre-attack preparations involve formally setting up damage assessment teams. Damage assessment travel routes will be identified. Priority facilities and utilities will also be designated. Observation posts will be either identified or constructed. Procedures to gather damage assessment inputs from other base units will be established and UXO holding points are determined. When intelligence reports indicate an increasing likelihood of attack, additional pre-attack steps should be taken. Trenches for UXO holding points alongside runways and taxiways should be graded or dug, and an airfield pavement reference marking system should be installed. The pavement reference marking system should be installed on all takeoff and landing surfaces. Optimally, the pavement reference marking system on these surfaces would include painted distance markings on the pavements and raised markers along the edge of the pavements. To perform proper damage assessment, at least one type of marker set must be used. It's essential this system be in place prior to an attack and be able to withstand the impact of the explosives to be functional. Although there are raised markers made for the pavement reference marking system, you may not have them available at your location or you could have lost some on earlier attacks. Consider using other materials that may be available as substitutes. For example, wooden stakes with painted numbers or round PVC pipes with letter and number decals stuck to them. The pavement reference marking system greatly reduces the need to measure distances to and sizes of damaged locations. The markers are a visual cue that DATS use to accurately locate pavement damage and UXOs. The painted markers on the pavement surface are placed at 50 or 100 foot intervals along the center line and along each pavement edge beginning at a zero point. A pavement reference marking system is not normally employed on access taxiways leading to takeoff and landing surfaces. Identifying damage locations on access taxiways can be accomplished using base grid map coordinates. While extent of damage and environmental conditions will determine what equipment is actually used during damage assessment, there are several equipment items that should be readily available for DAT personnel. Typically, these items are assembled during the pre-attack phase. You should have both a crash grid map and an airfield pavement map that shows runway and station post. Damage assessment forms, writing implements, radios with spare radio batteries, Binoculars and night vision devices should be included as part of your equipment. Other equipment, such as explosion-proof plastic cased flashlights, non-metallic measuring tapes, safety route boundary tapes, marker flags, and UXO markers are also equipment items that could serve a useful purpose. Safety ropes for use around uncollapsed camouflets and a first aid kit are viable additions. The physical damage following a runway attack will appear to be ominous. DATs must be alert to both obvious and hidden dangers existing everywhere. The first priority will be determining the extent aircraft pavements are damaged. Two types of data will be gathered during damage assessment. DATs must collect information on the locations of UXO and on the locations of pavement damage caused by bombs, cannon fire, etc. Besides location, the quantity, size, shape, color, distinctive markings, fuse type, and condition of UXO are all data elements that must be obtained. Such information will be recorded and reported. For example, UXO within 300 feet of potential repair operations or aircraft operating surfaces must be identified. In addition, holes of entry for subsurface UXO bomblet fields, and camouflet craters must also be reported. Specific pavement damage must be recorded and reported. This includes spall fields, bomb craters, and major debris areas. The DAT team records all pavement damage in UXO locations on paper as they progress down the airfield. 
The team in the SRC will receive the data and chart it on a map. Damage assessment normally consists of two phases. Initial reconnaissance performed by trained observers and detailed reconnaissance performed by the damage assessment teams. The purpose of phase one, initial reconnaissance, is to quickly assess the post-attack environment to identify the probable areas of pavement damage. Most of the observations will be made at some distance from the damage. The observations are typically made from pre-selected posts by personnel trained in damage and pattern recognition. For example, observations could be made from the control tower, air base point defense positions, aircraft shelters, or other specific airfield vantage points. These individuals can relay what they observe, including apparent pavement damage and UXO locations. DATS should expect these observations to be a rough estimate of damage, which will require further reconnaissance. Initial reconnaissance reporting procedures will vary depending on each base's pre-attack instructions and available communication setup. For instance, some observers may report directly to the SRC, while others report to their organizational control center. Security force observers may report to the security force base defense operations center that could then pass the information to the SRC. Phase one observers should attempt to give information regarding a piece of ordnance. They are not formally trained in base explosive ordnance reconnaissance, so they most likely will not include the size, location, color, and condition of the munitions or UXL threatening airfield pavement surfaces. They should also be instructed to report undamaged pavement areas as well as apparently damaged ones. Once these initial reports are received and analyzed by SRC personnel, phase two damage assessment operations commence. Since the full extent of damage is unknown following an attack, detailed reconnaissance is extremely hazardous and may be time consuming. Immediately after an attack, the SRC relays damage assessment instructions to each DAT. As you will recall from the top of this video, normally three teams are established during pre-attack preparation. These teams are dispersed to separate protected shelter locations along with their vehicles and equipment. This dispersal is key to ensuring these personnel are available following an attack to perform airfield pavement damage assessment activities. Damage assessment instructions for the DATs from the SRC will include pertinent initial reconnaissance information, assessment route changes if there are any, and special instructions necessary to define the task at hand. The SRC will direct the damage assessment teams to follow a travel route from their shelter location to their area of responsibility. Remember, predetermined routes are identified during the pre-attack planning to avoid duplicate assessments and wasted time. The pre-planned routes and any successive modifications by the SRC should take the DATs from their personnel shelters to the rapid runway repair team staging areas and then to the airfield areas. This ensures the runway repair teams have a relatively safe and clear path of entry to damaged airfield areas. Detailed reconnaissance can be conducted either on foot or by vehicle. The manual damage assessment system involves DATs surveying the runway and taxiway services on foot. This method of operation is used only as a last resort and when no vehicle is available. A team conducting damage assessment activities on foot will have more limited assessment capabilities due to blast hazards and UXL fragmentation. When DATs walk specific areas of the runway, identifying and locating UXO and damage, they must also take measurements. This can be done by pacing distances from known runway or taxiway locations, by estimating crater dimensions, and using non-metallic measuring tapes. Although the manual damage assessment system is the most accurate damage assessment method, it is extremely time consuming and exposes DAT members to UXL fragmentation and blast hazards. The other DAT technique speeds up the surveying process and offers protection. It's called the vehicle damage assessment system. It is the preferred method of damage assessment. Under this system, armored vehicles transport DATs between UXO and crater locations. The armored vehicle offers DAT personnel protection from UXO blast and fragments. The downside of this technique is restricted visibility. While the DATs are traveling at a safe range inside the vehicle, they are forced into locating and identifying UXO and damage from greater distances using binoculars. Errors in size, position, and identification reports are more likely to occur, 
Therefore, greater care must be taken to achieve accurate observations. The accuracy of this method will also vary from person to person. Factors such as distant observations, weather conditions, time of observation, such as day or night, and other human factors like fatigue and fear will also affect the accuracy. The ideal hardened vehicle for damage assessment is the M1116 high mobility multi-wheeled vehicle commonly referred to as an up-armored Humvee. It provides reasonable protection from UXL blast. But if this vehicle is not available, dump trucks or hardened rapid runway repair vehicles can serve as substitutes. Pickup trucks and similar vehicles will not provide the same amount of protection as hardened vehicles. However, they can serve as substitutes. The best travel route for this method of assessment is along the pavement center line. This route gives equal visibility to both sides of the runway and allows DAT personnel to visually sweep the runway forward and to the sides of the vehicle. DAT personnel should always remain inside the vehicle except in cases where the vehicle cannot get close enough to permit valid assessment efforts. For instance, if nearby pavement reference system markers are destroyed, the assessors would have to step out of the vehicle to estimate the distance from the nearest remaining reference marker. If a group of bomblets are seen on the runway, DATs should carefully approach the closest ordinance at a safe distance. Once again, the number, shape, coordinates, field width, color, weight, markings, render safe time, and render safe method should be recorded and reported to the SRC. The DAT should drive past the field in a manner that gives maximum standoff distance between the UXO field boundaries and the team. When bomb craters or camouflets are detected, the DATs should approach the area with caution. If the area appears to be free of UXO, DATs should move as close to the crater as possible for damage assessment. Coordinates for the center of each crater and the crater diameter should be recorded. If a camouflet is discovered, its coordinates and the size of the entry hole should also be recorded. DATs approach a spall field the same way they would assess a bomb crater, with caution. They should do so carefully and at a distance. Spalls are typically not highly visible. Even at close range, spall counts and field dimensions may be difficult to determine, especially if they are covered with debris. When a large UXO is on the runway surface, the damage assessment vehicle will move off the runway center line and approach the far runway shoulder edge and stop. It is the job of the DAT to record as much of the following information as possible, such as number, shape, color, weight, markings, coordinates, estimated render safe time, and render safe method. If an area is blocked by numerous UXO, DATs may have to stop their assessment run. Before attempting a roundabout route to reach the other side of the blocked area, the DAT should contact the SRC. Based on the incoming data, the SRC may see a pattern developing. If that happens, they may adjust travel routes and have a different DAT finish assessing the affected pavement area. In this type of situation, both DATs would assess damage from their respective sides of the blockage and report their findings back to the SRC. The SRC, in turn, would plot a composite of the area and, in all likelihood, develop a reasonably accurate picture of the damage sustained. After DATs have assessed damage, it must be recorded and immediately reported to the SRC for damage plotting and MOS selection. Communication will be a key factor in the success of damage assessment, so keep in mind the speed of reporting depends on the complete understanding of the information being relayed and strict adherence to radio discipline by SRC and DAT personnel. A list of the reported damage should be kept by the DAT for verification purposes when the DAT returns to the SRC. As mentioned earlier, damage assessment routes are normally pre-established. For example, the routes may start at the DAT personnel shelters, move to the triple R dispersal areas, and then head toward the more critical aircraft pavements. If the circumstances dictate change, be prepared for alterations to your routing based on information reaching the SRC. Regardless of the routing, however, there are priority airfield facilities that DATs must respond to first. 
These critical airfield areas include runways, taxiway segments that are long enough to permit aircraft launch and recovery, access taxiways, and supporting airfield lighting and aircraft arresting systems. Other important facilities to survey include aircraft shelters and parking areas, navigational aids, and rearming and refueling areas. Damage assessment teams should use crash grid maps to determine the damaged location when it is off the takeoff and landing surfaces and access routes. Most civil engineer personnel are familiar with the crash grid reference system. It's very useful for locating problems any place on base, especially when the precise location isn't critical. It could be used as a backup system where a pavement reference marking system may not exist. For reporting the presence of UXO or damages to runway and taxiway surfaces, a more detailed approach is used. Each damaged area or UXO is recorded and reported as a series of letters and numbers as outlined in Air Force Pamphlet 10-219, Volume 4, Rapid Runway Repair Operations. Damage assessment team members must become thoroughly familiar with these or similar recording and reporting procedures to ensure the damage assessment process is effective and reasonably precise. This video has illustrated how DATs relay crucial information to the SRC, which then directs recovery teams to specific areas. We told you damage assessment teams concentrate on airfield pavement damage so that rapid runway repair teams can provide a minimum operating strip and access taxiways for combat aircraft as quickly as possible. To accomplish their mission, it's essential DATs communicate adequately with the SRC, are transported safely to targeted areas, possess sufficient equipment and, most importantly, know all of the damage assessment procedures, especially the recording and reporting procedures outlined in Air Force Pamphlet 10-219, Volume 4, Rapid Runway Repair Operations. To aid in the accurate identification of pavement damage and UXO locations, the pavement reference marking system is installed as one of the major pre-attack activities. Remember, the success of rapid runway repair efforts will be contingent upon accurate and timely damage assessment. This is one of civil engineering's most important tasks in a post-attack environment and directly affects the wartime operational capabilities of our air bases.